The year was 1981, and the American heartland was in a chokehold. Farmers bled cash, truckers worked to the bone. An international harvester, a legend on American farms and roads, rolled out their grand solution, the 9-liter V8 DV 550 diesel, a machine they claimed would power the future. Instead, it delivered frustration and betrayal, unraveling a century of trust and contributing to a company collapse with a loss of over $4 billion. By the early 1980s, International Harvester was in trouble. The company that once ruled the fields and highways was losing its grip. After decades of dominance, IH was facing mounting debt, management missteps, and the worst market conditions in years. Farm income was falling and interest rates were rising. Families who had farmed for generations were now fighting to keep their land. Every piece of equipment had to work harder and last longer. There was no room for failure. Meanwhile, competitors weren't waiting. Ford, Cat, and Cummins were grabbing market share. Ford was promoting new diesel technology as the future of farm power. Cat had a reputation for unstoppable strength. Cummins was becoming the go-to name for medium and heavy trucks. International had reliable inline-six diesels, but customers wanted more. V8 power meant smoother performance, better horsepower to weight ratios, and more flexibility in tighter engine bays. The demand was clear, IH needed to respond, and fast. Company leadership made their move. They decided to offer a modern V8 diesel, a new engine that could power everything from medium-duty trucks to large combines, something that could win back farmers and truckers who were looking at other brands. But the plan wasn't just about filling a gap in the lineup. Inside the walls of International Harvester, people knew this engine was a bet on the company's future. The right product could help stop the bleeding. However, speed and cost-saving measures ended up shaping the project from the start. Instead of designing a heavy-duty diesel from the ground up, IH engineers were ordered to work with what they had. The new engine would borrow from gasoline V8 architecture, parts, tooling, and casting patterns repurposed to save time and money. It was a shortcut that looked good on paper but would later come with a price. The result was the 9-liter V8 diesel, known inside International as the DV550. It was promoted as the future of diesel power, the machine that would help farmers and truckers through some of the hardest years they'd ever faced. But behind the brochures and promises was an engine that wasn't ready for the job ahead and would only add to their downfall. The DV550 had the specs to back up that promise. Displacement measured 551 cubic inches, just under 9 liters. It was a naturally aspirated V8 diesel producing between 170 and 210 horsepower depending on the setup, with torque ratings from 400 to 500 pound-foot. The compression ratio was 16.5 to 1, typical for diesels of its class. The bore measured 4.5 inches, with a stroke of 4.3 inches, a balance designed to provide strong low-end torque without sacrificing engine life. Direct injection technology was a centerpiece of the DV550's design. Fuel was delivered straight into the combustion chamber, rather than into a pre-chamber like older engines. The goal was better atomization, cleaner burning, and improved fuel economy, features that mattered at a time when every gallon of diesel counted. The system also claimed crisper throttle response and more usable torque at low RPMs, key for heavy loads and fieldwork. The block and heads were cast iron, chosen for durability and to withstand the stresses of diesel combustion. The wet cylinder liners were a key part of the design. Unlike dry sleeves, wet liners sat directly in the coolant, allowing better heat transfer from the cylinder walls. They were designed to be removable and replaceable without major machining, giving owners the ability to rebuild engines in frame and extend service life. This approach was common in heavy equipment and was seen as a smart feature for operators who needed to keep machines running during critical seasons. Dealers often pointed to the wet liner setup as evidence of the engine's long-term serviceability and value. And then we use the appropriate tool to bring the liner up and you can see the liner comes up with very little effort. The cooling system worked alongside that design 
coolant circulated directly against the liners, pulling heat away from the cylinders during heavy work. The water pump and passage designs aim to provide balanced flow to both cylinder banks, preventing hot spots that could lead to gasket failure or warping. Radiators and shrouds were sized to manage steady heat output from long hours in the field or on the road. International promoted this cooling package as robust enough for the demands of farm and truck use, especially in extreme conditions where consistent temperature control mattered most. The crankshaft was forged steel, supported by five main bearings that provided the stability needed for medium-duty work. Connecting rods were torqued to 55 foot-pounds plus angle, while main caps were tightened to 125 to 135 foot-pounds. Head bolt torque varied slightly depending on serial range with figures between 110 and 120 foot-pounds. These specifications were part of International's pitch that the DV550 was built for durability, able to handle the rigors of daily work without frequent teardown or repair. Oil system details were also promoted as part of the package. It used full pressure lubrication, with galleries feeding key areas like the camshaft, crank, and rockers. Spin-on filters made servicing cleaner and faster. The pump was rated to provide good flow even at idle, something truckers and farmers appreciated during a long, low RPM jobs. The intake manifold was designed for even air distribution across both banks, with sealing specs aimed at keeping leaks at bay. The exhaust manifolds were cast for durability and secured with hardware torqued to hold up under high heat cycling. Together, these were part of the promise of long service life, with less downtime for common failures like leaks or cracked components. The V8 configuration brought packaging advantages. Inline sixes had long been the standard for durability, but they were larger and harder to fit in tight spaces. This nine liters compact size allowed it to fit into cab over trucks and combines where space was at a premium. It seemed like a modern solution for modern equipment. International's decision to base the DV550 on gasoline V8 architecture was framed as smart and efficient. By using existing tooling, casting patterns, and machining setups, they could get to market faster and hold down production costs. They spoke of proven designs adapted for new diesel duty, a sensible evolution rather than a risky clean sheet build. Their marketing material showed the DV550 powering through long days on the farm and long hauls on the highway. On paper, it looked like the answer farmers and truckers had been waiting for. But when put to use, the truth emerged, and that's where the real damage started. The DV550 didn't fail on the showroom floor. It failed where it mattered most, on the job. Operators who had trusted the specs and the badge found themselves facing problems they hadn't expected and couldn't afford. At first, everything seemed fine. The engine started easily, ran smoothly, and delivered the kind of power that had been promised. But as the hours built up, so did the trouble. Coolant loss became one of the first headaches. It didn't happen all at once, a little low one week, a little more the next. Operators tightened clamps, replaced hoses, and topped off reservoirs, hoping it was just ordinary wear. But the problem didn't stop. Instead, it got worse. Over time, what started as topping off coolant turned into a warning sign of deeper damage. Warped heads, cracked components, and blown gaskets that left engines steaming on the side of the road or at the edge of a field. Overheating became another frequent issue. The cooling system, which looked solid in the specs and sales materials, struggled under sustained loads. Long hauls, heavy equipment pulls, and hours of steady work pushed it beyond its limits. Temperatures climbed, hot spots formed, and heat damage warped liners and distorted key components. Each incident made the next failure more likely as weakened parts compounded the damage and reduced the engine's ability to cope under pressure. Oil contamination added to the growing list of problems. As gaskets failed and cracks spread, coolant and combustion gases found their way into the oil. Bearings that depended on clean oil for protection wore out faster. Crankshafts that should have lasted for years showed signs of premature wear. Mechanics who tore down DV550s found the same story again and again, an engine that couldn't protect itself from its own internal failures. 
Fuel economy, one of the DV550's big selling points, fell short of expectations. Owners who had counted on the engine to save them money at the pump found themselves refueling more often than they had planned. Compared to CAT or Cummins-powered rigs, the DV550 often burned more fuel to do the same job. And when fuel prices were high and margins thin, that extra cost hurt. But it wasn't just the extra fuel that wore operators down. Every stop at the pump, every hour spent watching the gauge drop faster than it should, was a reminder of what they were losing. Time. And time was money. Downtime was the price no operator wanted to pay. For farmers, a failed engine could mean missing the narrow windows that determined the success or failure of a season. Planting delayed, harvest interrupted. Truckers faced missed loads, lost contracts, and the constant worry of whether their equipment would make the next run. Every breakdown meant more than just a repair bill. The repair bills themselves piled up. Head gasket jobs became routine. Coolant system repairs, top-end rebuilds, oil flushes. The list went on. Mechanics learned the DV-550's failure patterns by heart. Some operators began carrying spare gaskets, hoses, and coolant with them, knowing they might need to make repairs on the side of the road or in the middle of a field. Others found that they'd have to factor the cost of repairs into the price of ownership. Parts shortages added insult to injury. As failures mounted, demand for gaskets, head bolts, coolant hoses, and other components outstripped supply in some areas. Operators waited days or weeks for the parts they needed to get back to work. Shops struggled to keep up, and dealers faced angry customers who felt let down not just by the engine, but by the entire support system around it. Resale values plummeted. Equipment powered by the DV550 became harder to sell, even when well-maintained. Buyers didn't want the risk and auction lots reflected that. Bids came in low and some machines failed to sell at all. A tractor or truck that might have fetched a good price if powered by a Cat or Cummins engine and instead sat on the lot, unwanted. Stories spread fast. Truckers shared their experiences at truck stops. Farmers compared notes at auctions and co-ops. Mechanics swapped tails at parts counters. The DV550's reputation went from hopeful to notorious in a matter of years. For many, the engine became a symbol of disappointment. And in the end, it wasn't just about the money, it was about trust. International Harvester had built its name on reliability, on strength, on machines that could be counted on when it mattered most. The DV550 broke that trust, and once it was gone, there was no getting it back. The DV550 didn't just disappear when production stopped. Some owners fought to keep them alive, rebuilding top ends and swapping gaskets, desperately trying to squeeze out a few more seasons from equipment they'd bought in good faith. Others gave up sooner, pulling it and dropping in a Cummins or Cat to salvage a good chassis or frame, a costly and frustrating workaround. Many of these 9-liter engines were left where they failed. Behind barns, rusting and forgotten equipment rows, or parked at the edge of a field, cannibalized for parts. At farm auctions across the Midwest, DV 550-powered machines became a familiar sight, but not a welcome one. Auctioneers tried their best, but as soon as buyers saw the distinctive badge or heard the dreaded DV550 in the lot description, enthusiasm visibly faded. Bidding on a solid-looking truck or tractor slowed to a crawl even stopped when this engine was under the hood. But the real legacy was what the engine came to symbolize. The turning point were International Harvester, a company that had supplied the American heartland for generations, lost the faith of the very people who had trusted it for over a century. By the early 1980s, IH was already reeling from a confluence of catastrophic events. The company faced a crippling $4.5 billion in debt, a sum that dwarfed its operating capital. This wasn't just a balance sheet problem, it was a crisis of survival. A bitter 172-day labor strike that started in 1979 had bled the company dry costing an estimated $600 million in lost production and draining its financial reserves and its institutional energy.
This industrial strife had not only halted assembly lines, but also deeply fractured relationships with its workforce. Simultaneously, competitors like Deere, Caterpillar, and Cummins were aggressively gaining ground, consistently offering diesel engines with bulletproof reputations for staying together under the most brutal conditions. Their engines simply ran, minimizing downtime, critical factor for farmers working against the clock and truckers operating on tight schedules. The DV-550, with its spectacular and consistent failures, handed these rivals an open invitation to capture IHS market share. Buyers who might have stayed loyal for generations, driven by ingrained trust and past performance, began to decisively shift. Cummins in particular seized the opportunity. Its legendary B and C series engines became the preferred choice in medium-duty trucks where IH once dominated, a direct replacement for the unreliable power plants. CAT's 3208 engine, a V8 workhorse, filled gaps in agricultural and construction equipment, while Ford's own diesel offerings carved out niches where IH had historically held sway. These competitors didn't need to name names in their advertising campaigns. The marketplace understood exactly who they were, contrasting when they promised rock-solid reliability and unparalleled durability. The failures of the DV-550 spoke volumes, turning what should have been an IH strength into its most glaring weakness. For International, the timing of their engine's catastrophic failure couldn't have been worse. It didn't single-handedly cause the collapse of IH, but it became a highly visible symbol of the corporate shortcuts design missteps, and quality control failures that ultimately helped sink the company. The DV-550 highlighted a deeper systemic problem within IH, a disconnect between engineering, manufacturing, and the real-world demands of its customers. By 1984, facing insurmountable financial pressure and unable to turn the tide, IH was forced to sell its venerable agricultural division to Tenna Co then the parent company of J.I. Case. The iconic IH tractors embodying over a century of American farming history became part of the rebranded Case IH, a painful and permanent relinquishment of its heritage. The truck division, though severely bruised, managed to survive, eventually undergoing a crucial restructuring and rebranding to become Navistar International Corporation in 1986. However, even as Navistar, the company was never again the industrial powerhouse it had once been. The loss of its agricultural arm, compounded by the erosion of trust in its remaining products, diminished its market influence and its reputation. The DV-550 was part of that agonizing story, part of what customers across the country pointed to when they talked about where and how International Harvester had lost its way, how a titan stumbled and ultimately fell.